Hey all, uh, so without uh, uh, wasting more time, I'll just jump on to the presentation. This is uh, about the disaggregated coordinator, uh, aka Fireball, our multi-coordinator. Uh, so Fireball is the internal uh, uh, project code name uh, in Facebook. So the motivation, why are we doing it? So uh, with the current architecture uh, uh, in the Presto, we have a single coordinator and multiple uh, workers, and that worked well for uh, many years. But uh, at Facebook, we started to feel uh, some of the challenges with the existing architecture. Uh, the uh, first of them is like uh, uh, with the existing architecture, we can't uh, uh, the coordinator to worker uh, ratio. Uh, there is an upper limit with that. Uh, so as we increase the uh, more workers into the uh, cluster, the coordinator gets overwhelmed with the workload. And that leads to uh, uh, we need to think about how we're going to uh, scale the coordinator. Uh, we can solve this problem by having like uh, multiple smaller clusters running behind a, a load balancer, but that leads to a resource fragmentation issue where some of the clusters will have a high queue onto a given resource group, while other clusters uh, uh, will have a lower load. Uh, and uh, uh, this leads to like, uh, if you want to solve it, uh, we need to have a higher end uh, machines to run the coordinator. But at uh, Facebook, we are actually uh, migrating our entire clusters to a lower end, uh, lower CPU and memory machines. So that leads us to rethink about how we want to scale the uh, coordinator. So the objective of this design is uh, we want the uh, flexibility to increase the coordinators into the coordinator pool, similar way as we have the workers. At the same time, we want to support more workers in the cluster. We also want to avoid a single point of failure. As uh, you can see in the existing architecture, coordinator is a single point of failure. Uh, by supporting multiple coordinators in a cluster, we want to avoid that uh, problem. And uh, another thing is we want to support coordinator to run on a low CPU, uh, low memory hardware, at the same time supporting more workers in the cluster. So, Here's the uh, uh, new architecture where we are introducing a new component uh, called resource manager. Uh, it's going to be a pool of resource managers running in a cluster and they, uh, uh, each one of them is going to be behaving as a uh, master. Uh, the job of the resource manager is actually aggregating the resource group uh, information at the cluster level, uh, the discovering of the nodes running in the cluster, uh, cluster management, and UI endpoints. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, the, uh, and as you can see, uh, the coordinator has changed from a single coordinator to like a, a pool of coordinators. They are running behind the load balancer, and the uh, fundamental work of the coordinator is uh, not much change. As in, a, it's going to be accepting the queries, analyzing, parsing, and executing the queries. Uh, but uh, some of the uh, decisions uh, it's going to make with the help of the resource manager's information. Uh, uh, and uh, one of the things the coordinator is going to be doing is regularly sending a query heartbeats to the resource manager. Uh, this will help the resource manager to uh, generate the aggregated resource group information uh, running within the cluster. And that has been later reused by the coordinator uh, to make the uh, queuing and uh, running new queries decision. Uh, and the UI endpoints, so uh, resource manager is going to be having the cluster level uh, uh, UI endpoints. So any cluster level information that the uh, coordinator needs to pull, they can uh, fetch it from the resource manager. The uh, worker pool uh, work is also, uh, it's going to be same. There's only slight change in the worker pool where it's going to be sending the uh, worker heartbeats to the resource manager. And this information has been used by the resource manager to generate the cluster level uh, memory pool information that has been uh, later used by the coordinator uh, to uh, decide on the uh, home killer as which queries to kill in case cluster is running out of memory. So that's that's a high level uh, architecture of this uh, system. And we uh, in Facebook, we put this uh, uh, our clusters behind the load balancer it is similar to uh, what we talk, uh, uh, heard in the earlier sessions, like a prism or uh, any other load balancer that the other companies are using. Uh, it's currently not open source from outside. And we have some uh, logic around like how uh, a new query comes in to uh, where uh, which specific coordinator that query should uh, go. But uh, with this new system, 
any out of the box load balancer can be put on top of the cluster and a uh, uh, normal load balancing can be used to work with this. So uh, going to the next, it's a query execution. So with the resource manager's introduction, uh, so one thing I think I might have missed is like the resource managers are gonna be working in a, a multi-primary mode. So this means they are not also become a single point of failure. And the discovery service, which we used to run in the coordinator in the uh, current architecture, uh, that's just for the convenience. And we are moving that also into the resource manager. And uh, there'll be multiple uh, discovery servers running uh, one per resource manager. So coming to the query execution. So the, uh, the slight change in the query execution. So query has been submitted to one of the coordinator Coordinator is going to be uh, parsing the uh, query and uh, assigning a resource group to the query. But once the resource group has been assigned, coordinator starts sending the regular query heartbeat to the resource manager. So this helps resource manager to generate the aggregated view uh, of the uh, overall clusters, how many queries are running uh, under each resource group. And uh, coordinator is actually enhance to regularly pull this uh, aggregated resource group information from the resource manager at a regular interval, which will be used later on, uh, uh, as I said earlier, to decide when a new query comes in to see whether it's eligible to run or whether we should queue it based on the resource uh, group configuration. Uh, so once the coordinator decides that the query A can run, uh, it's actually also been enhanced to regularly pull the uh, active workers available in the cluster from the resource manager. And that has been used to actually uh, distribute the query plan. And then uh, the rest of the query execution works as normal. And as you can see here, the worker pools are sending their work uh, uh, hard bits uh, to the resource manager at a regular interval. At the same time, the discovery server is running on top uh, on the resource manager. So this helps the resource manager to have all the uh, uh, available nodes information. Uh, at its place, so that can be provided uh, as and when needed by the coordinator. Uh, memory management. So uh, the resource group needs an up-to-date uh, CPU and memory statistics uh, for the cluster, and it uh, gets that by uh, getting regular query heartbeats uh, from the coordinator, uh, which includes the query CPU uh, and memory usage. At the same time, the uh, regular worker heartbeats that is been sent by the workers, which uh, includes the memory pool information. So together, using this information, uh, the resource manager generates the aggregated memory pool information. And this information has been regularly pulled by the coordinator, uh, which it uses to uh, decide on the uh, uh, killing as in uh, if the cluster is running out of memory, uh, it identifies which query to kill. Uh, now, as you can see here, like uh, resource managers are in multi-primary mode. So to make sure like they'll have an up-to-date information, the worker heartbeat's been sent to the, each of the resource manager and the same way query heartbeat is also being sent to each of those uh, uh, from the coordinator to each of the resource managers. This make sure like uh, each resource manager will have an up-to-date information about the entire cluster. Next, uh, yeah, so our uh, resource management. So with this uh, uh, new resource manager's introduction, uh, uh, we have uh, some changes around like how the uh, resource management work. So what the, uh, the resource group manager is gonna be running on the coordinator. And uh, it, uh, uh, as uh, I said before, so the regular query heartbeat's been sent to the resource manager. So resource manager has an holistic view of uh, the entire cluster's resource groups and coordinator is regularly, uh, coordinator can pick one of the active resource manager to pull this uh, information uh, at a regular interval. And uh, resource group manager is gonna be using this information to decide on like, uh, let's say uh, resource group A has a coordinator one is running uh, two queries in resource group A and coordinator two is also uh, running three queries on resource group A and the, uh, total concurrency for that resource group is a five, which means like we can't allow in a cluster more than five queries running within that resource group. So when a new query comes into any of the coordinator, 
the coordinator will have an information that for this resource group, there are five total queries running uh, as it's pulling that information from the resource manager. And for the new query, uh, uh, it, uh, it just queue and queues, the, queues that into the queue rather than letting it run till the uh, queue uh, out of the five query, one of the queries is finished. So uh, that's uh, how uh, the new resource management is going to work in this new architecture. Thanks. Uh, discovery server. So uh, as I said before, uh, in the current architecture, discovery server is running on the coordinator, but that's just a matter of convenience. Uh, with this new architecture, we have moved the discovery server to run on the resource manager. Here, just for simplicity, I did not put it as part of the resource manager, just to show like uh, discovery servers are also uh, uh, not a single point of failure. Uh, failure. So uh, what happens is like as part of the discovery service, each of the component coordinator, resource manager, and worker are regularly announcing their status to the discovery server, uh, uh, one of the active discovery server. And the discovery servers uh, within the within them keep syncing this information using the distributed mode. And uh, this is uh, something a discovery server uh, provides that uh, information, uh, provides out of the box. And uh, coordinator uh, be contacting one of the discovery server to regularly fetch all this information. So it just keeps regularly pulling this information to get that. To, right? uh, the UI. So uh, each coordinator is actually capable to serve the UI request. Uh, uh, when a request comes to the uh, coordinator, if the request uh, requires the cluster state uh, information, coordinator redirects those uh, requests to one of the uh, active resource manager. And the resource manager has a parallel endpoint to serve the cluster level uh, uh, information. Uh, and when a queries request comes to the coordinator, which uh, uh, which the coordinator itself is not running. So let's say a cluster has uh, two coordinators and a query B is running on the coordinator two, but the UI request comes to coordinator one uh, A, then the coordinator A sends that request to one of the active resource managers and the resource manager has the holistic view of like which coordinator is running this query. So it just proxies that request to the specific coordinator and fetches the results and return it back. <clears throat> uh, so the current status of the project. So we are feature complete and in the shadow uh, testing mode, uh, we are extensively testing it with our production workload uh, and uh, making sure that the performance of the system is up to the par. And uh, uh, here's the link provided for the issue and the pull request uh, that we are working with. And uh, soon we are planning to pro uh, provide a test branch to the community so that uh, they can start doing their own testing and play around with the feature. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Swapnil. I think the only question was really about, you know, when do we have this? And you have shared the link for the test branch that should be available soon. So Akshay, keep an eye out on the links that Swapnil had shared. And uh, mm -hmm. thank you once again for, you know, this talk.